Welcome back to it. It is your Feel Good Breakfast Show Express. So we're live on SABC3. Thank you very much for choosing to start the day off with us and indeed starting the week off uh, on the right side of lockdown with your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, through us, the month of August, we've been discussing issues that affect women in all spheres. And uh, as we round up, or round, round out Women's Month uh, today, we'd like to focus on one of the ways people have been fighting for equality. It's been a big fight. And that is through acts of feminism in response to patriarchy structures yeah that is right Tom. Yeah. so obviously because today we're asking you how do how does feminism and patriarchy operate in South Africa and now this morning we joined in studio by therapist speaker and trainer Asha Dulab to help us discuss this topic Asha how are you doing this morning I'm great lovely uh, to be back uh, thank you so way. much to for joining us yeah. <laughs> uh, this is uh, a very important conversation mm. to have uh, but maybe let's start here what is patriarchy mm. okay so Patriarchy goes back thousands of years. Um, it, it, it has made its, uh, its mark in the Stone Ages, in the Middle Ages, mm. and of course, it's still making its mark right here now in our modern ages. Mm. So, to put, sim uh, to, you know, to put it simply, I mean, the key feature of patriarchy is that it's a male dominant power structure throughout organized societies and also in relationships. And it shows up in, in, in all. Um, systems in our government, in our political systems, our economy, in our religious systems, in our households, in of course in the workforce. Mm. And basically it's it's the male dominance that leaves females feeling quite um, oppressed, um, restricted, uh, weak. They feel undermined, they feel um, completely not themselves. They cannot speak their truth. There's complete lack of freedom. Mm. All right. mm. so, so for me, Asha, I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of this and maybe you can educate me at the same time. So understanding patriarchy, I think, is quite important. But again, with that understanding, how does that then allow us to kind of, I guess, understand the movement of feminism, essentially? Mm. Mm. Your understanding is critical. We need to understand uh, these two concepts. Um, so it, 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 we need to understand it because we need to highlight and, and, the, the, we have to highlight and make people aware of the brutal inequalities mm. that women have, 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 been, have gone through. Mm. But the understanding, um, it's, it's tricky because we have layers of understanding and people will first need to understand themselves in, before they can actually understand these two constructs. Mm. Um, and the understanding will be um, digested and understood from people's own um, upbringing, their own conditioning, their own programming. So. It'll, it'll be digested and, and understood very differently for every individual because mm. of the layers and the degrees of patriarchy. Mm. It's interesting that you say and you mention these layers and is this something that has had like a, an historical upbringing or is, how has that affected this to the point that we are at currently now? Oh, the effects are in our face, it is raw, it is real. I mean, we are seeing it now in the gender-based violence, mm. there's domestic violence, there's um, sexual harassment, yeah. there's... Um, they, we see it in the household still, yeah. where there's just gender roles that are just always clearly defined. We see it in women being underpaid, not being recognized for their abilities, um, not being able to speak their truth in, in, in the workplace, um, not being able to make choices. Mm -hmm. There's no freedom in, in even making a decision. Do you see it in religious structures as well? Mm, you absolutely. see it at all different levels of society. This is such a big conversation, but one that's got to be had. And we're not just having it today because we're rounding out Women's Month. It's one that has to be lived as well. And so we do invite you to connect with us on our Facebook uh, page of course Expresso Morning Show SABC3 we're going to be receiving some of those questions and of course asking uh, those questions to Asha as well yeah. uh, but let's talk about feminism for a, for, for, mm -hmm. for a moment uh, very often I've seen on social media feminism as a concept be met specifically by men with a bad attitude mm. the, uh, the really bad sort of uh, 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 um, push aside attitude towards feminism what is the concept of feminism so it's a movement that for, for women to really try and um, speak the truth, to really um, highlight and make people aware about the inequalities. Mm. It's not about, um, you know, casting men out. It's very much wanting to uh, create a space and make room for people to be people. Mm. Um, it's allowing um, 
women the capacity to actually experience a sense of their own autonomous free self mm. and it's also allowing men to experience their um, ability to express emotion and for relational contact and, and for, for their, their ability to actually form relationships. Mm. I think men are very much um, part and parcel of, of this uh, feminist movement and um, we need to hear from them. Mm. They are relevant, mm. uh, they have their stories mm. and we need to embrace men hand in hand in this journey of feminism. Mm. The movement of feminism is not to say that women are going on this uh, trajectory to lift themselves higher by bringing men down. And I think what people need to understand or often fail to understand is that it's all about coexisting equally and that women are wanting to get their voices heard. But of course, we do continue mm -hmm. with this conversation. Ryle and I are certainly getting schooled um, in this regard. Let me invite you to also continue and add your voice onto that Expresso Morning Show, SABC3. Graham? It's my feel good Uh, welcome back. You're still locked in. It's your Feel Good Breakfast Show. Now, of course, with it being Monday, we are also talking relationships. And, of course, today, therapist, speaker and trainer Asha Dulab is joining us this morning to help us discuss feminism and patriarchy in South Africa and the ways in which we can work together to respect each other as well as humanity. So, Asha, I've got to ask, of course, how has feminism in South Africa kind of, I guess, evolved in a sense of, like, what would it do if it was to actually heal a society? But more so, how has it evolved to the current status and now? It has, it has come a long way, um, it has really evolved, and yet there's still much still to do. I think that there's been so many great campaigns, restorative, restorative care for both men and women. Uh, I mean, starting going, looking back at the Me Too campaign, it's really brought about so much awareness, so much freedom of speech. Um, and a yield so society will be all about freedom, a, really, a freedom to, to feel a sense of belonging, freedom to feel, to do, to speak, to love. Um, and it needs to come from a place of love uh, where we involve both men and women in this. Uh, it cannot be something separate. It has to be something where we both, where we really embrace the stories and the narratives of both men and women. I really love that answer. And I know earlier uh, during the break we were chatting about it. And I personally, as a man, am, am struggling with a few things when it comes to feminism. I, I'm a man that maybe wants to support the cause. Um, I have every intention to, to be a part of that solution. But I'm not always, and I'm sure I can share the sentiment with a lot of other males out there, we're not always confident in how exactly we can practically actually help. I mean, you're speaking about creating awareness. We want to talk about these topics and have these discussions. But in a practical sense, what more can we actually do to, to assist this process or to be a part of that uh, solution, so to speak? We have to really be able to recognize our patterns in our thinking and our feelings. I think that we want to do it, but I think we are trying to do it from a back foot. I think there's a lot of people walking on eggshells yes. around this topic, yeah. so I think we need to get comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, because there's a lot of, uh, there's, a, there's a movement from I don't care to I care. So there is a lot happening in the support. I think men need to support women and need to, and women need to embrace the support from the men because you, as you can hear, I mean, men want to support women yeah. like yourself. I think, I think with that note, I think it's definitely the case. We, we do want to, yes. we just don't know how. So maybe ladies, if you do see us stumbling with our words and, and, and trying to help, but it doesn't come across correctly, I think we need to just be a little bit maybe more understanding. Okay. Um, and like you said, I, I feel that effect of, of, of the eggshells mm -hmm. itself. And, and mentioning the, the, the fact of just having that discussion I think is already the first step in, mm. in, the, in the right direction. So uh, patriarchy, as we were chatting about earlier, and feminism, uh, very strong emotions when it comes to people. The current perception we have here today, is it something that's healthy or how far away are we from that mm. in terms of our actual understanding? Well, firstly, it has to be emotional mm. and rightfully so. I mean, we are dealing with um, the fundamental right of a woman to feel like a complete human being. So it will be emotionally loaded. And you must, we must remember that our emotions are stored on the cellular level of our bodies. So we also feel it in our bodies. Our whole bodies experience this emotion. Um, and with that, I mean, we, we need to really, again, go back to our patterns, our thinking, our individual psyche, as well as our collective psyche, and really get an understanding about it. Um, in order to really uh, understand why it's so explosive. But I mean, we are dealing with emotions of fear, of shame, and of guilt. So those are explosive 
um, emotions that, that are quite layered and complex. And, and would you suggest it's something that we can entertain? Is it something that we should express uh, outwardly? Is it something we just keep inside and kind of deal with? Or what would your suggestion be? Definitely we're needing far more expression of emotion. Um, and I think it is happening. Mm. More and more people are uh, speaking the language of emotion these days and men and women hand in hand. And I think that it, it's what's important is that we need to take, take a little step back and look at how we raise our children. Because we need to really focus on what are we saying to our kids, what are the stories and narratives that we are reading to our kids at home, because our kids are our future. What kids are learning will actually um, will, will speak volumes for the evolution. I think it's a beautiful message. And just for males out there, I think to get more involved in your own emotion, it's something that uh, doesn't really affect who you are as a man. If anything, it just kind of empowers it. And uh, just to finish off, do you think, I mean, I'm, I'm, I... I'm finding so much beauty within this whole concept of feminism. Do you think it's the perfect tool for us to really create that solution that we're speaking about that goes against things like gender-based violence and everything else that's negative that we're experiencing? Do you think it's the, the right methodology and the way forward for us? Absolutely. It is an effective tool. It's, uh, it's opening up so much um, observation on the top. People are looking and listening more. People are... Um, uh, are embracing emotional language. They are, uh, you know, ha they, there's so much more expanded awareness. They, there's a lot of doing. They, uh, there's a lot of sense of achievement from women in all of these campaigns. Uh, people, women are feeling far more empowered. And people are taking responsibility. There's a responsibility from both the male and the female. So, I mean, there's a sense of belonging. There's a sense of connection. There's engagements. We are building communities. So there's lots, lots happening, and it's a great tool. All right, the time is now. The accountability is here. So it's time to step up, <laughs> gents and ladies. Usher, I can't thank you enough for joining us in the studio and obviously just educating me and the rest of the men out there, which I think cannot do with more and more of this information. So we hope that beyond this Women's Month, we all continue to strive towards a nation where we all feel safe and valued.